Sandra. I'm asking you to give it up acting like you can live such a sloppy life as that. You had the lights in your room on all night long. Huh? This whole week, you've been in your room all day and will be awake all night long with the lights on until 3 in the morning. Staying up that late every single night not doing anything is sloppy. You are too old now to be living the life of a night owl. Now, you stop locking yourself in that room all the time and get your crap together and start living like an adult. You're telling me that this whole week you've been waking up at 3 in the morning to look at my room? I have not just been waking up only to look at your room, you idiot. I've just been coming to see what's going on with you, all right? Huh? What's going on with me? I need to make sure that you are changing into a proper adult, and that requires me checking up on you to see if you're getting your sleep or not. But you've always been in your room with the lights on. And whenever you do come out of there during the day, I take a look in there and see the room is a complete mess. I'm asking you right now to give that terrible life up and go find a proper job that will get you out of this house. But I've told you before that I am working a job right now. I've explained to you so many times now what it means to be a remote worker and that I can work from my bedroom. What do you mean, remote worker? All you do is sit on that laptop making minimum wage every day. Do you get it? That kind of work isn't work at all. All you're doing is sitting in your room all day long doing absolutely nothing. Not again with you saying that about me. If you can't understand the work I do, then that's fine. Just leave me alone and let me get my work done that needs to get done, please. I am not going to let you sit in that room rotting away. You have to become a responsible adult at some point. Your mom and dad aren't going to be there to help you along forever, right? If they pass away and you're still not able to care for yourself, then that means I'll be the one forced to step in and care for you. I do not want a life like that, so that's why I'm trying to help you out now. I am telling you right now that things won't end up that way, so you can relax now. I don't even plan on having you guys help me out at all in the future, just like things are now. I'm sure you're just saying that. <laughs> I'm going to make sure that you end up as a proper adult if that's the last thing I have to do. I want you out in the real world working a real job or so help me. So this won't be the last time I comment on your lifestyle right now and the comments won't stop coming until you become an adult. Can you guys please stop all of this, Bart? I am tired of having your wife come at me all the time about the life I'm living right now. All of the comments are completely unwanted and I just want to live life the way I like it. This is mom and dad's house as well, so she has no reason to be complaining like that. You have to be kidding. She's getting on you again. What happened this time? Normally, I'm to bed pretty early when it comes to my average week. But this week, I've been up until 3 in the morning getting some work done that desperately needs to be finished. However, she's now commenting on that, saying I shouldn't be such a night owl at my age. And she started calling my lifestyle sloppy and my room a mess. What? I've been keeping a lot of what she's been doing quiet from you, but I have to tell you now. Did you know that when I'll go out of the house from time to time, she'll watch me from the second story window? She watches me as I leave the yard and will be watching me as I walk back in. And once I'm back inside, she'll tell me that if I'm going to the store to buy things for myself there, I should also try picking up some shifts there. And she'll say so to me like such a smart aleck. Really? And recently she's been telling all the neighbors about how I'm some sort of shut-in who never leaves her bedroom. Because of that, whenever I go and take the trash out, they all give me cold stares. I think I've had enough of this, Bart. I never thought she'd be taking all that so far. I'm so sorry, Sandra. I've been trying so hard to explain to Jane the kind of work you do for a living, but she never wants to listen to me about it. Today she told me that I'll probably make minimum wage with the work I'm doing now. I thought in this day and age it was a totally normal thing to work remotely, right? Yet, how could someone her age be so against believing in what it is? 
I think things like remote work are only done by those that live in cities or more heavily populated areas. I'm thinking she doesn't understand how you're able to work remotely when we live in such a small countryside town. So that's led to her thinking that you're nothing more than a shut-in. Wait, wait, wait. It's because we live all the way out here that I'm working remotely. We live in the 21st century now where almost everyone has access to the internet, making it possible for me to work all the way out here. I've tried to explain that to her. And I'll let her know that you're making enough money right now that you wouldn't have to worry about finances even if you lived on her own. But she said to me that since you're still living in the same house as mum and dad, you can't possibly be making that much. And that's why she's so hell-bent on believing that you're making minimum wage or perhaps less. So she probably thinks I'm only making a couple hundred a month then. Which is strange since I'm making over 10,000 every month right now. I don't want to go telling you how much you're making, because that might only make things worse. But maybe now it would be the right thing to do, huh? I'm sure no matter what we tell Jane, she's not going to believe us. She'd probably think it's all a lie right away, since nobody who lives out here is making 200000 a year. I'm sure that's true. I think at this point, no matter what she's told, she's just going to continue calling me a shut-in. She wants to look like the perfect new wife in town to everyone. That's why she started lying to the neighbors about me now, right? She wants people thinking that she's so amazing as your wife that she's even willing to try and help me become an adult in her eyes. I'm so sorry about what Jane's doing. I don't really want you apologizing to me for what she's doing, Bart. Just from now on, I'd like for her to stop getting in the way of me and my work. It's because of her and her actions towards me that I've been having trouble focusing, and it's begun to set me back. All right. I'll tell her to stay away from your room from now on, okay? How's it going, Sandra? I'm sure you've noticed that your room is looking a whole lot better than it did before, right? Uh, um... Are you going to tell me that you've gone into my room again without my permission? Well, for a while now, I've been interested in that room of yours. I've been told by both your parents and by Bart now to not go near your room anymore. But when it comes to a shut-in like you in your room, it's like a pig in its sty in there. So I thought as your brother's wife, I should clean it up a little for you. If I'm not asking you to go in there, then please refrain from going near my room. Also, where are my things right now? I think you went past the point of just cleaning up my room as there's literally nothing in here now. <laughs> Anything that I thought I could make a little money off of, I sold. What? You sold it all? You even sold the laptop that was on my desk in here? Oh, well, that thing being in your room was the main reason you'd never get out of there and get a job. So I took that useless piece of garbage and made some money off it. <laughs> now you'll finally be forced to leave your room and go out to find a real job. You have to be lying to me. Why the hell would you sell my work laptop like that? Also, I was told something by your mom. You are living in here with both your parents still, yet you never pay for rent or anything. Being the age you are now, it's not okay to take advantage of your parents like that. So I took all that money I made off your things and handed it to your parents as rent for all the years you've spent living here. There is no freaking way all of this is happening to me. What the hell is wrong with you, Jane? You were told by everyone in this house to specifically not come near my room. And what's worse than you not even listening to anyone is the fact that you sold all of my things for work. I've had enough of this, all right? Huh? <laughs> what things for work of yours did I sell? That laptop was only being used for gaming, and I know it. You lost cause of a shut-in. <laughs> I told you, I'm not just some shut-in. How many more times am I going to have to tell you that? I, I've even given you my business card explaining to you who I am and what my job description is. If you still can't find a way to believe me even after I've shown you, then how about you give my company a call and ask? Then you could find out if I'm really working a so-called real job or not. There is nothing in it for me to waste my time calling them. And let's be honest, you really think someone like you is going to be working for a company based in New York City? <laughs> and working remotely in this town? Oh, 
I don't even have any friends out here that believe you can work remotely in this town. Well, your friends at all better start believing it because I really am working remotely for that company. I was able to make it into a company like that because I gave it my all in school and worked for years to get into a position that allowed me to work from home. And for a while now, I've been living a happy life at home with my parents making lots of money working from my room. But now it's all been ruined by some know-it-all witch. I am not going to forgive you for any of this. Why are you getting so upset with me? You can't be getting that upset with me just because I sold your favorite gaming laptop. I guess this goes to show that you really were doing nothing but gaming while hiding away in that room. Huh? Let me keep telling you that no matter how much you cry and whine, this was all your fault because you never grew up and got a job. I'm totally in the right for selling all your things in order to pay your parents back. Well, then I'm selling this house. I cannot stand having you living in the same house as me. If you really cannot stand living with me to the point you'll sell all my things, then I'll take this one step further and sell the place. But when that happens, good luck to you and my brother because you won't have a place to live anymore. Now get all your things together and get out of here. Huh? What are you going on about now? You want to sell this house? You don't have any right to sell your parents' house. Don't you dare start saying such baseless crap just because you're upset with me. I do have the right to sell this place, though. This house is my house, after all. If anything, not even my parents have the right to sell this place. What? This house is yours, Sandra? When talking to my parents about moving back in with them, we decided to have a larger house built that would be more open for all of us. And when having this house built, I was the one to pay for it all. Yet after handing away all my money for a house like this and having my name on it, why do I have to be the one treated like crap by someone I let stay here? If this is how things are going to be, Jane, then this whole house is going away and I'll move somewhere else. Wait a second there. What the hell have you been going on about? Seriously. You said that this house is yours and that you paid for this whole house to be built? Uh a shut-in should never have the ability to do something like that. That's why I've been telling you that I am not some shut-in. I am a woman making $200,000 a year. I make all that money just by sitting on my computer and working from home all day. And living out in the countryside means that someone like me making that kind of money can go all out building a house because the land and everything is cheaper. What? You're making $200,000 a year? S Sandra, you're really making that much? You have heard about everything from my brother already. He told you that I'm making enough where if I lived on my own, I'd never have to worry about money. Yet you chose to think that I was only making a couple grand a year when really I'm making over $10,000 a month. And with a bonus added to that each year, I'm at 200000 that, that's a lie. Living all the way out here, there's no way you're making that much. I knew that you'd never come around to believing me. Even now. But this is all the truth, and you'd better start understanding that right now. If you are still finding it so hard to believe me, then give that company a call that's on my business card. You can talk with them about all the work I'm doing and about how I'm working remotely right now, and about the kind of money I'm making in my position currently. But there's no way. At the start, I had planned on buying an older house and renovating it for my parents and I to move into. But then my brother heard about it and asked if you both could move in with us. So to make things better, I just had that older house torn down and had a brand new house built. What? My brother was fine moving into the renovated house with us before, but you wanted a larger place. Somewhere you could have kids and not have to worry about rooms and all that stuff. So you told him the only way you'd come back with him to live with his parents again was if there was a larger house involved. So there you go. That's why this brand new house was built using all my money. You had said that to him before, right? You wanted a larger house to live in if you were going to be moving in with his parents? Uh, um... Bart came to us instead of you, though, asking that we have a brand new house built, all so that you'd be allowed to move back in with my mom and dad. 
He explained to us that you guys didn't have the money either to help out with the new house, but said that by being with us, it would help out come time for you to have kids. He really wanted for you to be happy moving in with his parents, and this was the only way that could happen. But I, um... My parents and I accepted what he had said and changed the plans of renovating the house into building a brand new one. All because you wanted that. My parents were excited about the future where they could live with their grandkids. And I was happy to have you guys around with whatever cute kids you'd have. But back then I never thought that you'd be such a monster and subject me to so much hell while living in my house. Uh, wait. This whole time, who did you think was paying for such a house as this? It couldn't have been my brother and my parents don't have the money for it, so it's been me this whole time. That's why when you asked my mom if I was paying her any rent to stay here, she said no. I'm the one paying for everyone to live here. I made an agreement with my parents that if I were to pay for the place by myself, then I'd get to make the rules and not have to owe anything to anyone. So now, why do I have to have all my things sold and that money handed over to my parents as rent? Uh, no, wait, uh, that was... The only reason I haven't made my brother pay for anything is because I'm a really nice little sister. I knew that you both had been thinking about kids and I wanted you guys to save up for the future with them. So to save you guys, especially you, from being so stressed out, I told your husband no thank you when he offered to pay a part of the bills. Is that so? Yet even after all of this, I have the one woman I've been so nice to calling me a shut-in. You called me a lost cause as well, right? Even though I'm the one working as the breadwinner in this whole dang house? Everyone's even tried explaining my situation to you, but you just ignore all of that, instead telling the neighbors that I'm some sort of freeloading loser. I'm surprised it's taken me this long to finally reach my boiling point. Uh, wait, Sandra. Now I'd like for you to get all your things together and start preparing for when you have to leave this house. But if you want some advice from me, maybe selling it all and using that money for a new house is a better idea. You already know how to sell things so easily, so you should be able to make some money off of all your things, no problem. So hurry it up, witch. I'm so sorry, Sandra. I already heard about what's going on from Jane. I never thought things like this would turn out so bad for us. I promise that I will pay you back for all of those things of yours she sold. Jane has been saving up some money for a little while now, so I'll be using that money to pay you back. So please do not get too worked up over this. Then I'll definitely be taking that money from you, but as for things with her, I just couldn't handle them anymore, so I'm going to ask that the both of you still move out of this house. I've already talked with Mom and Dad about my decision, and I am having this house sold. What? You just had this place built not too long ago. This is all because Jane went all around the neighborhood saying that I'm a shut-in and that I'm a lost cause. Even Mom and Dad have to deal with the embarrassment of all those lies now, so we have to get out of here. Especially now that they know the truth about how Jane had been lying and are now calling Mom and Dad idiots for letting something like that happen here. Is, is that so? Of course, I'm bringing Mom and Dad along with me to the new house I plan to buy, so don't worry about what'll happen to them. As of right now, they're both working hard to make sure we have a place to move into here really soon. They would like to live in a large apartment this next time around. Even possibly a condo or something if we really like to. They're going over all of that right now with the realtor. <laughs> I see. If both you and Mom and Dad are okay with moving out, then I can't say anything against it. I'm sure having to deal with Jane after this by yourself is going to be a real pain, but do your best not to go insane. Sure. I'll try my best with her. Actually, this is the perfect time for me to bring up a divorce to her. I plan to make her responsible for all that's happened, as she is, and then get her kicked out of this family. What? You plan to get a divorce now, Bart? Actually, it's because of her that there's been some trouble for me at work. I've kept this all of a secret from you all, but I'm actually at my limits with her as well. I'm going to use you being upset with her as cover, 
make that my get-out plan from this marriage. She's caused trouble for you at work as well? Wh what the hell did she do to you there? When things have calmed down a bit, I'll tell you. For right now, I need to get to kicking around of this house. I plan to be out of this house myself sometime this week. So she needs to get out. <laughs> What am I going to do, Sandra? I I was just told by Bart that he wants to get a divorce. He told me he can't stand me anymore. He said that I've gone and ruined things for his family and for his career, so he doesn't need me anymore. I heard from him that you went and did something to cause him some trouble at work. I, I didn't do anything to him, though. I was just being his wife and was trying to get close with all of the people in the neighborhood. And, well, while talking to them, I started to talk about the kind of work that he's been up to. But how does me just saying a few things about his work land me in the position of getting a divorce? Well, you had to have done something pretty bad for him to want a divorce, right? How the hell did you talk about his work that led to there being trouble for him? I just said that my husband happens to be a hairstylist. I said that he studied at a school in New York City and then moved back to this town to work. So I asked all those people to please go and give him a try and see how well he does. I said that if they gave him my name and said that I sent them, he'd do all sorts of things for them. I'm pretty sure that's the reason why. Telling them that they'd receive all kinds of things from him without even asking him first? Huh? What's so wrong with me doing something like that? I was trying to be a good wife by giving him a lot of customers and making friends. And when it comes to Bart, he's so good that he's even able to cut your dad's hair. When it comes to cutting hair, I think he needs to be better than just cutting my dad's hair. My dad barely has any in the first place, so I think you're overestimating Bart a little too much. And using that as your reasoning for Bart treating those people to extra things is just not okay. But, but... From what I've heard, Bart has had to give around a hundred free haircuts to people from all over town because of you. You think him losing that much money is something you can call supporting him? What? I didn't know that. That is all because you said he'd give them some special things if they said that you were the one that recommended them. Some of the customers were so upset with him that if he wasn't going to give them a haircut for free, they'd report him for scamming them. Bart has said that pretty much everyone in town got a free haircut from him and that there will only be more people coming. All because of that, your husband hasn't been making any money now. And worse than that, this has caused a lot of people to lose faith in him. No way! And if you didn't think you're causing troubles for him at work wasn't enough, don't forget about what you've done to me. After having labeled me as a shut-in and doubted my work for so long, Bart has been trying to get the both of you out of here. He's been trying to save up for a place the both of you can enjoy, but you've gone and ruined most of his business, and now he doesn't have the money to. And just recently, you went and took all of the things out of my room and sold them, including the things I use for work. I think it's fair to say that you had this coming, and him wanting a divorce is totally warranted. I was just trying to be a good wife. I wanted to make sure that your parents loved me as well since I've been living with them. I wanted to get their shut-in daughter to find a job and I wanted to support my husband's business. And I wanted everyone in this town to know who I am and what I stood for. Well then go and ask all those people you've been trying to gain respect from what they really think of you. Ask them if it was really okay to call your sister-in-law a shut-in and lost cause when she's making 200000 a year. And ask if it was the right decision to sell all my things and give the money to my parents as rent. And don't forget to ask them if it was right to ruin your husband's business in order to get everyone free haircuts. I really want you to ask them all if they think what you've been doing has made you a great wife. But, but that's... I can see that you really want to become a great wife for my family, but everything you've done so far has been a total miss. And you're making fun of your sister-in-law over something you couldn't comprehend has turned you into a monster. I get that life is so hard for you when you get to move into a house for free and not work a job, but try a little harder next time thinking about what the hell you're doing to everyone around you before acting. 
But, but, I want everyone to see me as the good wife I really am. I don't have a whole lot of friends either, and I wanted to make plenty here. If that's really what you wanted, the next time don't ruin other people's lives for it. Now I hope you enjoy the next stage of your life as a wife that's coming. Goodbye. <coughs> Jane started to really freak out about what was going to happen to her and started asking those in the neighborhood to help her. But when they said that she lied about all the service her husband would offer them, they made sure she knew that they couldn't help her out. And so soon after that, the divorce between my brother and her happened. When I went and put up the house for sale, Jane's parents ended up coming to the open house to apologize for what their brainless daughter had done, before saying they'd buy the house from me. They then moved into it with their daughter, but the whole time that they lived there, they scolded her about she never threw out the garbage. Or about how she would never turn off any lights in the house. Which always ended with them saying that it was no wonder Bart wanted to divorce her. After the divorce, my brother took advantage of being single again and started to put more time into his job. He would tell all of his customers that were sent to him by Jane that he would give them free service this time, but that the next time they came, they would have to pay. And would also apologize to them for the lies that Jane told them about the offer in the first place. And after about a month of having to do that, he started to have people showing up again for their second cut and paid him for his work and time. As for my parents and I, we ended up moving to a seaside town where we could be by Sandy Beach at all times. And the three of us are all enjoying this condo we bought while relaxing in the sun. Man, I was so surprised today. It's been since our graduation ceremony at college since you and I last saw one another. And for me to run into you again is just wow. <laughs> by the way, you started working at the bank after you graduated, right? Well, I never knew you were working at that bank of all places. I was just as shocked as you today. I never thought I'd be running into someone I knew from college today at work. From what I heard through other people, you happened to get married right after you graduated, right? You already know that one to be true, Cindy. <laughs> after all, the man I married happened to be your ex-boyfriend, Jackson. <laughs> It's because of me stealing him from you back in the day that I'm able to be happy all the time with him. Thank you so much for that, by the way. <laughs> uh huh? But listen, I've been worried about you this whole time, Cindy. You really loved Jackson back then, and I didn't know what kinds of things stealing him from you would do. You ended up taking time off school after you found out I was the one that took him from you, right? <laughs> I'm glad to see that after something as tragic as that, you were able to get yourself a job and are working. Stop talking about all of that like it wasn't a huge problem. What the heck do you mean you've been worried about me all this time? No way you've been. I've been more worried about you because of how mentally unstable you are. What? <laughs> I am still not over what happened back then between you and I. I had always thought of you as my number one friend then, yet, because of that sadness and hatred I felt after you took my boyfriend, I was never able to get over it. Stop trying to act like you're still a victim to that. <laughs> back then, I was just young and made a mistake. I was jealous of you because you had gotten yourself a man that works for a huge company and I really wanted him for myself and that's why I began to make myself a little closer to him if you know what I mean. Well, it's because of me and my beauty that I was able to keep him and right after graduation ceremony, him and I got married. <laughs> And right after being cheated on by my boyfriend and having my best friend end up being the one doing so with him, I left the two of you behind and started to work on finding myself a proper job. However, while that was all going on, you continued to harass me with comments about how you didn't need to find work because you had a rich man by your side now. I am really so happy I married Jackson. He's able to bring in a ton of money for me, and I never have to leave anything to for anything besides leisure. <laughs> and when it comes to things like chores, he says I don't even have to worry about them. All he wants from me is me at his side, as that what makes him happy. Hmm? Oh, that's so amazing for you. But, as I was thinking, Never having anything to do really leads to one becoming bored, right? As that's why I've gone out and made myself a business. I'll be going from a housewife to one of the best business owners in the city. <laughs> 
You're going to become a business owner? I want to make myself a salon where I can get other women like me who have a lot of free time on their hands to come work. And I'll make sure that they are taught how to treat really high-end models and rich older women's hair. That way, I can make millions. <laughs> That's why I ended up going to the bank today to get some financial support. And you happened to be there. I was laughing my butt off at that time. Someone like you ended up as a single woman and now have to spend every day of your life working to support yourself, right? Huh? Your last name hasn't even changed yet, so that means you don't have a husband, right? Could this be because you still can't get Jackson off your mind? I'm sorry, but I'm married right now. My husband happened to take my last name, and so that's why my name has not changed at all. <laughs> You're lying. Someone that had their boyfriend stolen from them from right under the nose has a husband now? Well, I suppose there are men in this world more hopeless than you. I'm sure that he has nothing special about himself, and that's why you settled from him, right? That's not true at all. He cares a lot about his career and is someone I can count on quite often. Actually, he happens to be a department manager for the company he's working for. What? A department manager? <laughs> I actually married him after we both met working in this bank. H hold it. You stop right there. To be a department manager at a large bank like that would mean he's kind of an elite, right? The fact that you were able to land a husband with such an amazing job and income as that, I... I can't fathom. Now, I'm really busy with work still. See you. I hope you can get that business of yours rolling. Cindy, come and help me. What the hell is up with this friend of yours? Uh huh? What's going on with you? Just a bit ago, she came in saying that she plans to start a business of her own, and that she'd like some financial support with it. I asked for another one of my employees to handle that for me, to start looking into her history and all that to see if we could accept her and let her get a loan through us. And just after talking for a bit through my employee and settling the conversation, we thought she'd gone home. But she's back again, and now she's asking to speak directly to me. She keeps saying that she's friends with my wife, and it means I have to give her money right away. What? Does her name happen to be Tiffany by any chance? That's right. That's her. I tried to handle the situation myself, but she's asking me more about my private life than actually wanted to talk about business. Huh? She's asking me whether or not I'm getting tired of being married to you. And she's asked me many times now what types of women I like. What the hell does she want from me, this woman? Actually... Do you really happen to have a friend as vulgar and stupid as this woman? Well, I did have a friend like that at one point, but not anymore. I'm sorry that you've had to deal with her when you're so busy. She happened to be in the same class as me back in college, but there was a lot that happened and now I don't talk to her anymore. But actually, she ran into me today when I was walking into work. There was a lot that happened between you two? Uh, she must be that really crazy chick you told me about before, right? She happened to be that girl that stole my boyfriend from me while I was dating him. She stole your boyfriend? And because of that, she's been able to enjoy a really relaxing life as a housewife with him. Well, she just kept going on and on about how amazing her life is and bragging to me that I told her I had to go. But before saying so to her, I wanted to get back at all her bragging a little and told her that my husband happens to be the department manager here. So that's how she became aware of me then. You really don't have to worry about this anymore and can get right back to work. If it doesn't look like you can finance her business for her, then just tell it to her straight. Oh, I'm definitely not financing her. It already seems like the business she wants me to finance for her is a little vague. But there are also some other things in her past that are stopping me. Are you sure that woman is really married right now? Because the background check... Um, what do you mean by that? When it comes to us wanting to start supporting someone with opening a business, we first need to know about the money they have currently. But she told me that with the amount her husband makes every month, we shouldn't have to look at her account balance and everything. And after that, all she continued to do was try and force us to look over her husband's income. The problem here is, the income statement from her husband is from five years ago. Five years ago? That's not going to help her get her funding at all, right? I told her for the time being that it might be a little difficult for us to get her any money, 
but then she asked me what she could do to get me to give her funding from the bank. She kept begging me to tell her what she could do, and then she handed me her number and walked out. Uh huh? Of course, right after getting it from her, I threw it away. But seriously, something about all of this isn't right. She came into the bank asking for money, but the only way to prove she was financially stable was her husband's income statement from five years ago. I thought I had seen it all working for the bank, but that right there is just wild. If she really happens to have a husband that can make enough money for her to stay home all day, then why can't he fund her her new business? I don't understand why that isn't happening either, because that seems like a way easier option for her. Do you want me to take over this problem for you? I'm really sorry all of this ended up on your plate, but I'd really like to handle it before things get out of hand. And she comes after you. Huh? Are you sure you're okay with that? Aren't you busy yourself? You just became this bank's executive this year, right? So you have so much you need to do already. Having to take on the work I should be handling is not something that'll go over well with your workload, right? No worries, Martin. I'm actually quite embarrassed that someone from back in my school days has come back and caused my husband all kinds of trouble. I'll deal with Tiffany from now on, so if she comes in again, send her to me. And if she's come asking about the financial support she'd like again, tell me. I'm sorry, Cindy. It looks like as though this time I've gone and stolen your husband from you. <laughs> uh-huh. To think that you'd actually have a husband that's the department manager for a huge bank like that. I've been so jealous of you being married to an elite like him. It's driven me nuts. That's why, like last time, this time he's mine. Um, what are you going on about? My husband has no reason to be cheating on me with a woman like you. My husband actually happens to love me very much and is straightforward enough where if he stopped having feelings for me, he'd say so. I'm sure this is all hard for you to believe, but he's gone and chosen me now. He had been saying no to all of my advances for a little while now, but finally, today he said he's going to go out with me and now we're going out to a bar together. The fact that he's willing to go out with me to a bar at night just goes to show that he's completely fallen for me. He's already forgotten about you and I'm hoping tonight we can make that official by taking things to a hotel room. What? You think him saying yes to going out with you tonight to a bar is him showing that he no longer loves me? Well, would he ever go out with another woman one on one for drinks that late night in the evening? In other words, this all shows that he does not care about you as his wife anymore. He's only focused on me now. Well, even if that were to be the case, don't you have a husband yourself? Do you plan to stab Jackson in the back now? Of course I do. I'm going to hop off his slow train and onto your husband's luxurious and fast one. Really? He may be working for a very large company and all, but him making it to the top is going to take forever. Compared to him, your husband is by far the better choice for me. At the age he's at, he's already managed a position as the department manager for a bank that popular. I need him to be mine right now. He will definitely be the perfect choice as my next lover. <laughs> Man, I feel so bad for poor old Jackson then. And also, since I'll become the wife of a department manager at the bank, I'll be able to get my funding for my bank, no questions asked. That means I'll have my business up and running in no time. No bank is ever going to offer financing like that to another family member. This bank is far from that kind of practice and will make sure you go through the same process as everyone else. Shut the hell up! All you are is a base level employee there and know nothing about that bank's practices. What? Compared to your husband, you'll never move up in that bank, so you're better off just shutting up and letting all this play out. You won't be able to do anything about us in your position anyway, as your husband is currently the department manager and he might soon fire you. And actually, since you've already lost to me again, go ahead and start working on those divorce papers and hurry up all this for me. That man is now mine and I'll have access to all of his money. Do you have any idea who I am? Huh? I guess you have no reason knowing who I am since you're just a loser. You were even able to take a good look at who I was walking into the bank last month and yet you still have no clue about me. Hold on now. You have no right making fun of me now when you're still a low-level employee there. 
I'm just calling an idiot an idiot. What's so wrong with me doing something as correct as that? You think that I'm actually a simple employee here? I'm above my own husband in this company as I'm the company executive for this bank. I happen to have a lot more difficult of a job than he even has, and in return for that, I literally am making the bank. So you really have no place calling someone like me a low-level employee. What? The company executive? Um, what is that position? Oh my god, I'm so sorry. An idiot like you would never be able to understand what someone in my position is. Banks area actually run a little differently than your average companies when it comes to business. When you talk about department managers in banks, they are actually the branch manager. And the person above them that directs everything is called the company executive or just the executive. And so by what you've told me, you're actually the executive for that bank? That's right. Yet you said I can't do what my husband, the branch manager, is able to do? How hilarious! There's no way he's able to do anything without my approval first. I have more rights than anyone in this bank after all. Huh? And when you've told me that you've gone and stolen my husband from me and everything, I have to say I'm sorry for you. You think my husband would ever throw someone like me who's making so much money right now away for someone with no money? Today I'm going out to dinner with my husband as it's actually the day of our wedding anniversary. Your guys' wedding anniversary? Yeah, today we have been married to one another for three years now, and that's why we're going out to dinner to celebrate. You think he'd really want to go out to you on a bar on an important day like this? B but he said he wanted to go out with me tonight to the bar. He told me he'd be waiting for me there and everything. He was the one that messaged me and everything about our date plans. I don't care about the fact that you're some kind of executive because that means nothing when you're about to lose your husband. So this is who my wife's been talking to. When did I ever say to you that I'd be going out to the bar tonight with you? It's disgusting that you'd even think that of a married man, so stop with your crap. Uh-huh. It's been a little while, right? I'm Cindy's husband, Martin, if you couldn't already tell. Martin, why would he say all of this is disgusting to you? You were the one that said yes to going out on this date with me tonight, right? You told me that you'd be waiting at Freezy's bar just downtown for me. I told you to never talk to me about anything else ever again. And said for you to always remember what I said to you. The only thing I said yes to you about was having you come to that bar tonight. At the place we're having dinner. So that I can show you how much I love Cindy. What? You, you plan to show me something like that? I've told you so many times to shut the hell up and leave me alone. Yet every time you come back saying you're a better woman than my wife. And then you follow that up with asking me whether or not I'm tired of Cindy yet. You, you have kept all of that up for so long that it's really drove me up a wall. But look, Tiffany, I don't like that you have my wife involved in all this still when she has a lot of work to focus on. So that's why I said we could go out tonight and that you could meet me at the restaurant and bar to see me with the woman that I love. I was surely hoping after seeing that you'd give up. That's the reason for me saying yes to you wanted to go on a date and that's why I've been waiting. That's what's going on? None of that was about you wanting to actually go on a date with me and you're going to tell me that you didn't fall for my beauty? What about you was so beautiful again? Don't say something so embarrassing about yourself like that, please. Uh-huh. I really like myself a woman that puts all her effort into her work like my wife. I find that kind of thing beautiful about my wife, and it gets me to love her so much. But comparing her to someone that thinks it's okay to steal men from other women and then openly flaunt about it? <laughs> no way in hell. Not happening. To me, nothing about that is beautiful. Huh? I do find your drive to open your own business really cool. But the fact that you don't have any money and ask for a lot, and don't even have any experience in the field? You really think you can get financing from us just like that? You told me you wanted all your employees to have wonderful manners and skills for the job so that you could cater to celebrities and such. But look at you. No manners whatsoever. You've been digging into my wife trying to make yourself look better than her by talking all this talk for so long, but I have nothing to show for it yet. Do you think any bank is going to want to lend you any of their money? Wh what? There have got to be women that want to come work for me and learn about how to take care of people with lots of money, right? 
Stop making fun of me in my dream to become one of the best business owners in the city. You do have a good point. There are things in this world that you will never know about unless tried. But when it comes to this bank and its money, we're not going to blindly throw it away with you. If we don't see something having a chance of turning up a profit, we won't finance it. Especially when it's for something run by someone with poor ethics. That's simple. Stop all that bullcrap right now. Thinking you can harass me like that? You're not even going to go on a date with me now, and yet you still want to bully my dreams? Who the hell would ever want to cheat on their husband for someone as rotten as you? You can go ahead and stay with that toxic wife of yours and both go rot in hell. Sorry about my husband yesterday, Tiffany. No matter what the reasoning, someone should never make fun of another wants and dreams. I warned him not to do that again, okay? As for my bank, we want to help make sure that everyone is treated fairly when it comes to their money. So if you don't mind, next time come see me in person and we can talk about your dream. You and I were together back in college, so I promise to treat you well. Oh, so now the executive of that bank is going to be the one to talk with me about my business? <laughs> well, that must mean I'll get my money in no time, right? That is not all what I meant. Rather, I would be happy to offer my support if we can make a deal. So in return for me being kind enough about letting you work with us, I'd like you to start being honest with me. Let's start by talking about how years ago that husband of yours ran away from you, right? So right now you've been living in a load of debt all by yourself. What? If you are not going to be able to tell us everything about your financial situation, we're not going to be able to help you here. You, you hold on a second. Why? Why the hell are you aware of what happened with my husband and my debt? Well, I happen to be the executive of a very large and popular bank, right? And I happen to know about him because of that. I am also aware of the amount of money you currently have and about when and where you're receiving and sending money. You happen to both still share some banking information with one another so I can find out about you through it. Are you kidding me? But listen, I haven't been doing all of this looking through your history for a bad reason. We just happen to have to know as much about you as possible before considering you for financing. But don't forget, we also have to look into your personal history here, and I made sure to go through everything we found as diligently as I could. As diligently? When it comes to that amazing marriage you happen to have and bragged about, that is actually all a lie, right? You have actually been divorced from Jackson for over 5 years now. And when it happened, you didn't get any kind of money or properties from him. And ever since that happened, you have not been remarried and have been all alone. You tried so hard to make yourself look like you were living your best life as a housewife online, but because of that, you are now $60,000 in debt. And the amount of money in your bank account right now is only $3, right? No! So you found out freaking everything about the true me! I'm sorry, but having someone in your situation ask out for financial support and starting up that salon, well, it's going to become a real headache for us, I'm sure. You already happen to be in a terrible financial situation yourself, but also lied to my husband and I about your private life. If anything, you try to commit fraud by doing all of that. What do you mean fraud? Who the hell cares that I did all that? I just wanted to start my dream business so that I could help cater those with lots of money and make a living. I already have a major following online and they all care about me without even having to know that I lost my husband. But the fact that you lied to us about your horrendous situation means that my bank will not help you. How about you tell all your followers the truth and maybe get some support from all of them? Tell them that you still have that dream, but need all their support to make it happen so that a lonely and poor woman like you can be happy too. You'll probably get a lot of them feeling bad for how desperate you are and they'll do anything to give you a helping hand. But when the celebrities find out about how my salon started, they won't come. You are not going to get away with treating me like an idiot any longer. And the fact that you look into my true self without my permission is not okay. I'm not treating you like an idiot if you've already been acting like one. And I went ahead and looked into the true you in order to try and help with your business dream. Yet, after all that time my bank and I put into looking you up, you saying that about me hurts. 
Ugh! I wish I had never ran into you in front of the bank like that. For Christ's sake, you and your screwed up husband are the worst. I don't give a dang about your bank support and I don't want to talk to you ever again. But you wanted to be the one getting support from me. <laughs> Let me tell you right now that if you go out to anyone about my true life and started yapping about it, I'm going to kill you. I promise you that. <laughs> After that, I never received another text from Tiffany ever again. And as for my husband, he was in the same boat as me, never having to get a text from her ever again. And after what happened between us, Tiffany's debt only continued to grow. And with that money she took out from loan sharks, began to start a business of her own catering to the wealthy. But each month, she only makes herself $300 as there are very few people coming to be around her and I have enough to say that that is not enough money to keep the business going. And when she went online to tell all her followers to visit her, not a single one of them came. What makes this all worse is that she's leasing the current building she's in for $5,000 a month and that's only causing her debt to grow even more. And at one point, one of the loan sharks waltzed into her salon to leave her a message and that the next day the place was closed down and she was nowhere to be found. Hey, Gabe. I just got an email from this jewelry shop online. And, well, I think it's some kind of a scam. You're telling me they're trying to scam us? Actually, I just got a call from their store as well. They've told me in both the email and over the phone now that last week while in their store we dropped a handkerchief on the floor. What? They then told me that they'd be sending it to our house for us as long as I provided them with the house address. But this to me seems like some kind of scam. Uh, what do you think? We haven't been to any jewelry stores lately. And they are now asking us to give them our address. So I'm thinking before I do any of that, I'm going to let the police know what's going on here. Well, wait a minute. You don't have to call the police about that one. I'm going to give that store a call right now, so you can go ahead and relax about it. What? I don't think they need to be sending us anything in the mail, so I'll go to the store and see what they want. Can you tell them that right now, if you're still on the phone with them? So you're telling me this isn't a scam at all, but that you actually went there before? Did you end up going out to a jewelry store the other day, Gabe? Oh, did you go out looking for a present for me? It will be our five-year anniversary next month, right? Huh? Who do you think is going to be buying you any kind of present? I'm not going to be wasting my money on a five-year anniversary like that. Wasting? This is going to be our five-year wedding anniversary, though. Well, if you weren't there shopping for me, then why were you there at all? What did you end up buying there, and for who? Well, I was, um... I was there for my little sister, Jillian. That girl just got back from being overseas for school finally. And she said to me that she's chosen where she's going to be working now. So as a way of celebrating her accomplishments, I planned on getting her a present from that store. What? So Jillian is back in the States now? Also, it's awesome to hear that she was able to find a company that would hire her right off the bat. Well, I suppose you're going to have to celebrate something like that. So now that you know why, I'm going to head over to that store later and get what I forgot. If you're alright with it, I can head over there for you and get the handkerchief. I was just planning on heading out of the house to go shopping myself. Don't do that. I just told you that I'm going there later to get it. Don't you dare suggest such needless crap like that to me again. Uh, what was that? I just thought I'd be helping you out by doing that. I'm telling you to shut up and just focus on the home and nothing else. Don't you dare concern yourself with anything else regarding that store. This is an order from your husband. Max, thank you so much for the present celebrating me finding a job. I can't believe you'd get me such a nice journal as this. I'll make sure to use it every day at work. You don't have to thank me, Jillian. Actually, I'm sorry that my present to you was a bit late. I'd only just heard from your brother a little while ago about how you'd found yourself a job now. No worries, okay? I've been really busy with everything after getting back to the US, so I never had time to say anything to too many people. I'm sorry about not getting the news out to you sooner. As a way of showing my thanks, uh, let me take you somewhere out to eat. I actually happen to have some gifts for you from overseas, so it'd be nice to meet. 
Really? Oh, thank you so much for them. Then I'd love to go out to eat with you then. Oh, on that day, I'd love for you to wear whatever piece of jewelry it was that your brother had gotten for you. I really want to know what he ended up getting you from that store a couple weeks ago. <laughs> what? I was supposed to get something from Gabe? I've never actually been given any kind of jewelry from Gabe before yet. I think the only thing he's ever gotten me is this wedding ring, and that was years ago. And, well, it's just a wedding ring, and all women get them from their husband. I want to know what a man like Gabe got for his cute little sister. I was actually quite surprised when I heard he was getting you anything at all. Um, what the heck are you going on about right now? I haven't gotten anything from him yet. What? But he should have given you some kind of jewelry as a present for getting your first big job, right? Gabe went out by himself to get that for you and was never going to tell me about it. Well, I haven't gotten anything from him at all. And, wait, he was going to get me jewelry as a present? <laughs> what? He hasn't even ever gotten me presents for my birthday, so I doubt he'd give me anything over this. He and I have never been that close to one another, so I don't think he's ever going to get me anything. But, but before, Gabe was telling me about how he was at that jewelry store getting something for you as a gift. That's at least what he was telling me at the time. Um, Max, there is something that I've been wanting to tell you about, and... I was hoping to do so when we met in person to eat, but, um, I think my brother might be cheating on you. What? Gabe is? Right after getting back into the country, I had gone out to see my brother for the first time in a long time, and he had brought a friend along with him. She was very young and short, and he had his arm around her shoulder as they walked up to me. No way. I thought that perhaps the two were just close or something, but after what you just mentioned, I think I know what's been going on. I even saw him again another time while out with some friends, and he was with that same girl, only this time his hand was around her waist. I know it's been a long time since I've seen him from the back, but I know that that man was him, with the same woman. But, but Gabe has always been so busy with his job, but he shouldn't have the time to be going out with another woman right now. He might just be calling it work when he's really going out with another woman behind your back. I had another friend that had the same thing happen to her when her man was cheating on her. And in the end, those two broke up. Are you kidding me? Don't you find what's going on with Gabe in that jewelry store a little off? I haven't gotten anything from him yet. However, he was telling you that he was there to get me some kind of jewelry for my present? He was. Now that you mention it, something isn't right here. And now that I'm thinking about it, today is his day off from work, but he's not home. For the past few weeks, it's been this way, actually, with him telling me he's always had to go out to eat, leaving me at home alone. I think that right there is proof that he's cheating on you. And if he were actually working as much as you might want to think he is, then he'd be working way too many hours a week for the job he has. You've said that he's always out late every weekday for work, and now he's also out doing things that he wants to make seem like work or meetings on the weekend. And he should be tired from all of that, but instead he's always ready to leave the house with so much energy. I think I should take a moment to look into this some more. I think it's going to be really difficult for you to deal with the truth of him actually cheating on you. So if you're going to dive into what he's doing like that, be ready for a very sour truth. And of course, I'm on your side in all of this, so you can ask for my help with anything. Thank you, Jillian. To be honest, for a little bit, I have been worried he might be cheating on me. But I never wanted to find out if it was true or not, so I just chose not to think about it. However, having you beside me now, it gives me some confidence. My brother's always been a bit sloppy with things, so I'm sure you'll get some evidence in no time. If things get out of hand, make sure to call me the moment you need my help. I will be right at your side with the snap of your fingers. I finally made it out here. Now, while I'm out of the country for work, I'd like you to take good care of the house. Sure thing. Leave it to me. 
do your best on your very first business trip out of the country. I'm sure it might be a little tough at first, but with you being you, you'll get used to things there. Well, of course I'll be fine. <laughs> My company seems to think that I've been doing an awesome job and knows that I'll be perfectly fine in another country while working for him. I'm going to make sure that with this business trip, I'll prove him right and I'll make something happen for the company here. Ah, well, while you're out there, do you mind buying me something as a gift to bring home? You're out there for a while, so when you have some downtime, you can buy me some treats that we can't really get in the U.S. Also, would you mind picking me up some spices and things like that from there as well? I would love to try cooking with them sometime. Huh? I'm not in another country on vacation right now. This is all about work. I was never asked by the company to go out buying things for you, so shut up. You don't have to get that upset with me over a simple request. I'm totally fine with just some things from the gift shop in their airport. He's such an idiot. <laughs> a very business businessman like me does not have the time to be out buying things for you, right? Now, I'd like to focus solely on my job here, so please do not call me or text me while I'm gone. <laughs> Molly, I finally made it over here. Molly, when are you supposed to be arriving here? I really want to hurry up and have you in my arms on this island. Or without anybody knowing about it. <laughs> what was that? I was somebody having themselves a little nap on the plan. I made sure to give you a call this morning to make sure we talked through everything regarding the trip, right? <laughs> oh, I hope you got enough sleep. Now you sleepy head. And get out to me on time. I've always been so nice and on time with you, so... You better not still be on your plane... We're in the airport taking your time the luggage. You'll only make me upset. <laughs> oh, how scary. I made sure to sleep a bunch on the plane and I'm coming out to meet you now. Only a few more minutes and I'll be seeing you again, Gabe. Hey now. Hey now, Molly. You and I are finally on our first vacation with one another. So please call me Daddy this time. I don't know anybody on this island. Neither do you. So you can go all out with showing how much you love me. I'm madly in love with you. And I hope you're just the same way with me. I'm so happy to hear that, Daddy. <laughs> but I'm wondering if you'll be able to manage that love for me for a whole week. If you become too crazy for me while we're here, your wife might find out and do who knows what to you when you go home. <laughs> That'll never happen, so I'll be fine. <laughs> my wife is the most stupid idiot on this planet. She can't even see that I've been cheating on her for a while now, so I'll be a-okay. <laughs> what? Your wife is really that much of an idiot? Oh, she's so stupid that it killed the love for her I once had. Oh, just a little while back, she found out about me going to that jewellery store and should have been able to catch you hint then. All I did was tell her a small little lie about how I was shopping for my little sister. She never suspected a thing. <laughs> but even right now, she's convinced I've gone overseas for a business trip. Yeah. She's never going to doubt a single thing I'm doing, that brainless idiot. <laughs> what? You keep going on and on about how stupid she is, and it's making me feel a little bad for her. She just happens to be a crappy wife is all. You're being too nice for feeling bad for her. If you keep acting like that, I might stop wanting to meet you. Yeah, oh, but I won't ever want to stop meeting you, my little Molly Wally. Been looking forward to this vacation with you for so long. And starting today, you and I are going to be making love for a whole week. You can go ahead and forget about my stupid wife. Let's make this a vacation we'll never forget. <laughs> Have fun on the last vacation you'll ever be taking. <laughs> what? Just like you're wanting. I'm going to make sure this last vacation is one you'll never be able to forget. I'm going to make sure while you're on that trip with her, I'm by your side the whole time following you. This is going to be our last time spent together, so I'd like to spend it taking all kinds of photos of you both together. And by the way, I'm with Molly right now on our way over, so don't worry about where she's been. And once I get over there, you can start having all the fun you want with your Molly Wally. Huh? What? What's going on? Huh? Molly? This is you, right, Molly? You can calm down, Daddy. 
This only happens to be the planet's number one idiot on the other end of the phone. What? It seems like Daddy was so happy about being with his little girl that he started to text me instead of her. And for this whole time, you've been going on and on about your plans with her to me, so I decided to just play along like I was her. <laughs> I wonder what you're going to do now about all this. <laughs> huh? Oh, crap. Oh, I've really done it now. So you're telling me that this whole time I've been texting you and not Molly? I told you I was just acting like her is all. I can't believe you never started to notice anything. You're kidding me, right? Uh, I'm about to be getting on the plane now to be there right beside you. So can you please wait a little longer for me to get there? No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, this is very much not okay, right? Something's up here. What the actual freak is going on? What? What's not okay about all of this? I admit that I made a mistake by sending all those texts to you instead of her, but why are you with Molly right now? You stayed back at the house after saying goodbye to me today, right? And right after that, I headed straight for the airport myself. I knew all about the plans you had with Molly to go to the Bahamas and have a little secret vacation together. And I knew about how you'd both be heading over there on different planes. And so I aimed to go on the same plane as her, and right now we are both on our way to see you. Huh? You knew about all this before I left the house? Even the biggest idiot this planet has ever seen was able to notice that something was up with you the whole time. So I went ahead and planned some things out myself and started to look into what was really up with you. And what I found out was that you'd be saying you were going on a business trip, but you really planned on going to the Bahamas with Molly. And so after finding all of that out, I planned on filling out our divorce papers and then leaving you for good. But then I thought it would be even more fun to come along and be there with you guys. <laughs> uh, uh, you have all this all wrong, Max. I'm sure this might all, all look like I'm going on a vacation to cheat on you, but this is actually about, um, about business. What? Well, that trip overseas was changed to, to me just going to the, to the Bahamas. I'm sure you have no idea what I mean when I say that since you're just a housewife. But um, a company's asking their employees to change locations like that last minute for work is quite common. And this time they asked me to come here. Then you were just planning on having the woman you're cheating on me with come along with you to do business in the Bahamas? Uh, Molly actually happens to be one of my co-workers. She happens to be one of my subordinates. And well, we're so close to one another that we give each other nicknames like that. That whole conversation I thought I was having with her just then, it was all a gag we usually do. You think with the way things are now, you're still going to be able to fool me? From what I can tell by looking at her, she is in clothing not acceptable for work, and she only has a small bag on her that does not look like it's filled with things for work. Tell me, what about a girl like her is your co-worker for this business trip? <laughs> I'm actually the one who brought all of our things along for us. I'm sure you just have no clue what's going on here since you're just a housewife. When it comes to business trips like this, where more than one person's going and one of the employees happens to be female, the male co-workers will bring her things for her. That is just messed up. I might have only just started working for a big company like you, but even I know there is no rule like that. I have heard about all sorts of things when it comes to business, but I have not ever once heard about how the men have to bring along the women's things on a business trip. What? You think that just because she's a housewife, she doesn't know a thing about your world? If anything, you're making yourself look like more of an idiot than you've painted Max as. You are aware that before getting married, Max was working full-time herself and is very much aware of a lot of the rules when it comes to business. You really did not think things through in making up a lie like that for her. Oh, what? This doesn't seem like Molly or Max right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hi, Gabe. This is me, your little sister, Jillian. W what? Jillian, too? Why are you with Max now as well? You know, I came along with her in order to help her deal with you. When I heard about her going on this trip to follow you and Molly out on your little vacation overseas, I thought that was very brave of her. But then I began to worry. And so I'm going to make this my last fun trip before entering that company I've been hired into. So that means right now, it's not just Molly and Max anymore coming your way, but myself as well. I am 
Oh, so looking forward to this week-long vacation in the Bahamas. Come back to me, Max. You can't just go right back to your parents' house the moment we got home. Don't you think you can rethink divorcing me over this? I can't do that anymore. I plan to hand in the divorce papers soon, so can you please sign them and then send them to me? Please do not ask me to do things like that. I won't cheat on you anymore. I was just having a little fun is all. I don't really give a crap what any of that meant. All I care about is how I feel now and about all the scars you've given me. I want to get away from the man who thinks it's okay to cheat on his wife and go overseas for a little rendezvous, and I'm going to be doing that right now. But I'm telling you, I'll never step you in the back like that again. All that whole time we were in the Bahamas, I was apologizing to you, right? When it came to your hotel and all the food I was the one that paid, I had to do all of that to make up for what I did to you, so don't you dare keep asking for more from me. Excuse me? Are you in the position right now to be getting upset with me? I'm wondering if you even know what position you're in right now. You're the housewife that's been having to rely on my income to survive. Do you really want to push me away from you with that divorce? The moment my money stops going to you, you'll be done for, you idiot. And that's why, in order to get myself back out there, I'm planning to get every last penny out of you. I'm going to not only be getting half of what we owned, but I'll also be getting a settlement from you. So please pay it off. What? That's right. I've been in talks with a lawyer this whole time. That's why along with those divorce papers, I'll be handing in forms on a settlement that I'd like to receive from you. You may have been the most insufferable cheating husband, but you at least made some good money, so I'll be taking that now. Then I'll be able to take my time getting my life back on track. Uh, hey, wait a sec. You, you've already been talking to the lawyer about all this? I learned from your sister that speed is of the essence when getting rid of vile insects like you. That's why I've been preparing for this day for weeks now. You, you're lying to me, right? So then, you really are being serious about this divorce. Once you and I are through with, then you can go ahead and have all the fun, loving time you want with Molly. You should be very excited for this divorce. No freaking way. I'm excited. Her and I are done talking to one another now. And that's because you started asking her to give you a settlement as well. Well, I need her to be responsible for laying a hand on my husband. So before she could run away from all this, I made sure my lawyer got in touch with her and made things very official. She's already paid me now, but I get you both are no longer a thing. Her and I broke up so you can give all this up now, dang it. I'm asking you please not to ask for a divorce. I've been stressed by work for so long and I just needed a breath of fresh air with her. So in order for you to get that breath of fresh air, you're totally okay with hurting your wife? You're fine with calling her brainless and an idiot and all kinds of other horrible things? Can you show me where something like that is written down saying it's okay? Uh, well, that was... You and I are getting a divorce. This was decided long ago by you before I even knew anything about you cheating on me. And you only made your feelings about wanting one even more apparent by going on that trip with Molly. But I never thought that you'd do a 180 like this and start asking for me to stay with you. That's because I don't want you leaving me. I just cheated on you one time is all right. You say that like one time of cheating is totally okay and moral. Did you know that this whole time you've been cheating on me, I've been having to go through sleepless night after sleepless night thinking about you? I thought that I'd finally made my point and the outcome for you all clear and that I'd finally get a good night's worth of sleep. But you want to try and fix things with me now after all that? What's been done cannot be fixed and I have a phone full of messages that you accidentally sent to me proving so. What? Well, let me tell you that recently I've had this problem where I'll put my phone in my pocket and it'll start sending screenshots that I've taken to random people. And when I lay down in bed and put it on the charger, my phone will open an app and send things to people both you and I know. Hey, hey, stop that. That is not okay to be talking about, right? Um, right? You and I can get divorced, okay? But please take all those screenshots of our conversation, all the photos of me and Molly in the Bahamas, and delete them. 
I'll do that for you, as long as you sign the papers and send me the money I'll ask for. Now, I'll have my lawyer get in touch with you in a few days here, so please work together with them to get your money situation with me all figured out. After that, I was able to safely get a divorce from Gabe, and along with that, I was also able to get all the money I had asked for from him. Soon after that, I got a text from Jillian telling me to focus on getting a job first and that I would have time to relax later on. So with all the advice she gave me, I was able to enjoy the money I received from Gabe and Molly while going out and looking for a proper job again. And while I've been at it, I'm thinking of taking a few online classes to help me get certifications that'll get me into the career I want faster. Now, when it comes to what happened to Gabe after the divorce, he ended up being disowned by his whole family who found out what happened. But it wasn't just his family, though, that found out. As a little while later, some of his co-workers learned about what happened with him while he was in the Bahamas. He had actually been doing so well for himself at his job, but with this rumor about him spreading around, his higher-ups began to think otherwise about the kind of man he was. So, as of right now, he is still stuck working for that company while getting some of the worst looks from everyone in the office. Thank you for watching all the way until the end. If you felt good after watching this video, please like the video. If not, please leave a comment and give us your feedback. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Your comments and likes help this channel grow. We hope you enjoy our other stories as well.